Hey guys, my name is Simpsy. How are you all doing? Welcome back to some more Total War Three Kingdoms here today on the channel. We're going to be starting episode 7 of my Dongjo Let's Play Records Mode campaign. So guys, if you're enjoying this series and want to ensure more content, the best thing you guys can do is to leave a like, subscribe if you're around here with notifications on, and let me know in the comments where you would like me to expand and conquer. Got to say a huge thank you to the Creative Assembly for sending me an early access code of Three Kingdoms and making this Let's Play possible. Here today, we're going to have Rapid Conquest. The Dong is going to expand and conquer. We're currently 60 turns into our Records Mode Let's Play campaign. In the last episode, we managed to defeat... Con Rong, just outside the city of Liu Yang. Now, 60 turns into my Let's Play, we are going to reap the rewards of our defensive play style. As we have been obviously playing on records mode, and Dong Zhuo is one of the hardest Let's Play campaigns to do, starting at war with what, 8, 10? most of the coalition factions we've had to play rather defensive picking off the factions one by one as we've been outnumbered eight to one for the majority of the campaign now as obviously you've seen over the last couple of episodes we've systematically defeated and thrown back one by one of the coalition Sao Sao, Liu Bei, Con Ron, Yuan Shao as well and now looking at our diplomatic standing, it has taken some time, but we are officially not at war with anyone, which is fantastic. Before, if we were to expand into territory, we were easily flanked and outmaneuvered by my enemies. So, as you see, we are not at war with anyone, so now we can pick and choose who we're going to go to war with, and we will. We're going to go to war with Sao Sao here today, and his vassals. Now, interestingly enough, we have an alliance. Who would have thought it? I was blown away when this came up, but Yuan Shao came to me and was like, Dong Zhuo, would you like a coalition? And I was absolutely over the moon to accept. So as you can see here, most of the uh, factions actually don't mind me too much. So for now, we have an alliance with Yuan Shao. He has forgiven me for murdering his brother, Yuan Shu. So let's see what fares and what's left of the coalition. Gonso San has lost a lot of their territory, especially with the Han Empire as well. They've actually... I'm going to... Where's the Han Empire? Because the Han Empire have... Uh, where are they? Right, here we go. Finally got them. <laughs> a lot of mismanagement there. Okay, so the Han Empire actually has fled south. They do have very few territory within central here, where most of the other factions... Kondron has also been pushed back. Uh, what else has happened here? Sao Sao is very much on the back foot. Yuan Yao here, who is Xu's son. Uh, even Sun Jian has fled back even further down here as well. So most of the major factions have had to have massive secessions in the wake of Yun Xiao's conquest. So, without further ado, let's declare some wars and get stuck into today's Let's Play. Okay, so we currently have here, of course, Dong Zhuo with a full stack. We're going to push against this city here of Ying Shun, uh, Shaun, I don't know how to say that. It is obviously um, Sao Sao's large city. And then we're going to actually push further north here as well and take Ying uh, with uh, Lu Bu. So we can take this entire territory. With our border secure from the north, we're going to be able to expand and conquer quite quickly. We still have some armies further at the back defending my own territory where we can. Diplomacy-wise, um, we can get some more non-aggression packs with a couple of factions, but we're going to leave that for now. We're going to declare war upon Sao Sao here today and call our allies. So, let's allow Dong Zhuo to push and take the province of Ying. Let's issue the declaration war with Dong Zhuo and Sao Sao. Okay, so it's a rather close victory. We're going to have to build a battering ram here. Let's continue the siege for now. I'm going to negotiate with my ally Yuan Xiao. Hopefully we can try and bring him in. Now, my coercion is quite low at the moment, 
But that's alright, we're going to be able to get it back up on track Greetings. soon. So, leave Coalition Trans. Uh, we can't transition it. The Coalition of Tempered Steel. They've rejected, okay. We can actually make a marriage alliance. Now, at the end of the day, Dongjo, <laughs> even though it says he's, he's relatively trustworthy, we want to be the emperor, we want to be the conqueror of all China. But, would he marry into you and Xiao? We can receive an alliance. We can marry my daughter, Dong Li, to you and Ta. Oh! You and Tan. I'm very tempted to do that. So the heir would be a Dong. Hmm. The thing is, I want to be conquering the entire map eventually, knocking out especially the major parts of the coalition. So I think he's too valuable for me. She's too valuable. Uh, to me for now. We will defeat and betray you and Xiao, but not for some time. Okay, so we've also got Lu Bu here, ready to continue with my brother Dong Min. And let's push into the city of Qing. So, let's declare war upon them as well. Let's issue a declaration. The Han Empire requests aids against Tao Ying. Oh, okay, so we're at war with a lot of factions here. What triggered that off? Because we declared war upon him. Okay, let's starve that out now. And let's switch back to the diplomacy map mode. And... See how the war fares. So, if you do play your own Dongjo Let's Play campaign on records mode, it seems like a really good strategy. Try and continue and pick apart safely where you can, especially on this difficulty, and especially when you're playing on records mode, you can't really overextend yourself too much. For example, I've seen in the romance mod mode, Lu Bu can take out entire garrisons by himself. But in this, obviously, he's not immortal. We've got to be very careful. So, now we're at war with Sao Sao. And there are a lot of... Oh, you and Xiao's been drawn into it as well. Okay, so we're at war with a lot of factions in the south here. Okay, so which battle will we play for today's episode? Okay, so we've got Lu Bu down here. Which is a close victory. Should we auto resolve this one out? We can starve that out for now. Because we haven't actually had a proper siege battle in this Let's Play campaign. And having a siege battle against Sao Sao might be a good idea. Yeah, we'll play this one. So let's continue the siege with Dong Zhuo. We'll go now and auto resolve the battle with Lu Bu. And then we'll have this entire territory for, our, for ourselves. Let's uh, delegate this one. We can't go with a night attack for now. And let's uh, finish off one of Sao Sao's vassals. A close victory. We deployed 3,589 and lost 1,284. We didn't lose the entirety of any one of our units. Lu Bu, 61. Dong Ming, 67. Some of our swordsmen did really well here. 412 my heavy cavalry as well. So we've got a couple of options here. We could raise, gaining my intimidation and some funds, but I'm going to occupy for now. And uh, good, now that's been conquered. We have the farmland territory here. Perfect. That's now been taken and we have 2,000 in the bank. Let's quickly go and spend this. Okay, just gone through my construction pool. We do not have enough money. Okay, so we're going to continue the siege here until we get our battering ram. We're going to have to uh, continue it for one more turn. Let's hopefully hope that we don't get hit here in the Luoyang Lumber Yard. The city's going to be able to defend itself for one turn. Does anyone else want peace? I'm just curious because we just war decked a hell of a lot of people there. Oh well, regardless, we'll end the turn and continue and see how the AI reacts. We're going to have the siege here today of the large city and we've been attacked in the lumber yard. God damn it! Sal Sal, you, <laughs> you mastermind of strategy. You manipulating mastermind. Damn you! That must be one of our first territories we've lost, and it's... Oh, no. Oh, it might be okay. Uh, range of marriage. Chen Chao. Uh, no, thank you. I don't want to marry into anyone else. 
So has my intimidation been completely rocked there? It has too. So that could cause unforeseen consequences. Shameful defeat. Traitors and dogs conspire against me. Why they cannot? I'm saying it's irrelevant to do. So Dong Zhuan now. Bonus experience up. Oh, there's been a faction secession with the Han Empire. A friendly drink. Oh, evening is quiet for the, for the crackling fires. The mummers of soldiers pass. So we can... So as... As you pass camp, some of your comrades invite you to drink with them and talk as the last of the day lights ebbs away. Okay, so a friendly drink can be risky. Now, Zhang Lao, I have a really good relationship with him, but do I think he's going to poison me now that my intimidation's down? I'm going to accept the offer, but of course, you've always been ready and happy to toast with your comrades. So let's now hope that doesn't end up killing Dong Zhuo and a rebellion imminent further back here that's fine we can deal with that we will be able to get our intimidation back on track in any way if Dong Zhuo dies we still do have of course a strong family line unfortunately my son Dong Gan who I was making jokes about previously has died. Oh, we probably could marry off Dong Min now. Oh, uh, we still can't afford it. We can't even marry him to my daughter. That would be ideal if we could do that. Okay, so we've got some reforms to choose, characters and commanderies to deal with later. We'll do this after the siege of um, Yin here. So let's defeat Cao Cao's force on the field of battle today. We're going to go with the night battle to get the minus 15 morale for the enemy. So, we currently have 3,822, while they have 2,192. They only have one unit of swordsmen, three units of spearmen, four units of archers, and two units of cavalry. So, let's fight this one on the field of battle today. So, it's going to be an interesting case study to see how well their arrow fire, uh, arrow towers do against me. Give these dogs nothing but fire and fury. No matter the season, all traitors must be destroyed. You speak well, but you will still die. Okay then guys, let's continue to the battlefield. Okay, it's currently pissing down with rain, so that's not overly too good. Okay, but here is a city in Total War Three Kingdoms. This is what you're going to be working with if you do a siege battle. Slow siege degradation as well. Man, some of these houses look beautiful. Pushing towards the town square as well. Here we have the dragons of ancient China warding off <laughs> the uh, supposed attackers, I guess. And then we have the, the town square itself and the cherry blossoms. Fantastic. Alright, let's uh, push up and go for it then. Okay, so what's my best plan of attack? Looking at towers wise, they have one there. This is a gateway, so there's a tower there. Well, there's three lots of towers there. Guard post. A, a show of teeth can be a greater strength. So, horse exchange, rumors as well. So, to win, I just need to control this victory point. Okay. So, the way we're attacking now actually seems to be the most beneficial. Controlled. Is this not controlled? Damage, 100%. Okay. Darrow Towers there. I'm just trying to see... Which is going to be our best approach. Potentially this way. Will be the less amount of arrow fire. I don't know if arrows come out of this. But I guess we'll soon find out. Okay, we're actually going to swing our deployment around. To here. Okay, and this is how we're going to do it. So, let's allow my battering ram to be pushed up. Uh, pikes 
are good and expendable, so it's not a bad idea having them. However, I want to try and push where I can. So let's use one of my swordsmen to be equipped to the battering ram. So let's break up into some units of fours. So four can push here. Okay, then I want whatever axe unit I have uh, here, light axes. Now, theoretically, you should be able to... Oh, you've, we've actually got an encampment there. That's really cool. We should be able to push for this. Um, I'm trying to think what else. So, that's a good line here. Who else do we have at the back? Uh, okay, so, you four, as well, can push over here. So, essentially, what we want to do is we want these guys to act as a battering ram. Okay. Uh, Cavalry-wise, I don't think we're probably going to be able to flank with them too much. Uh, we've only got one piece of... We've only got one piece of siege equipment, so it's going to be a little bit difficult on that front. A lot of arrow towers are that way. Pushing another lot down here might cause an opening. Do we have another axe unit that we could commit? Sure, let's do that. This is our first siege, so we need to sort of test things out. There's even a small barricade here, by the look of it, that you can hold back from. I wonder if you can equip units onto that, that'll be cool. Okay, so let's move you here. Uh, if you do manage to get this open, this will be where the cavalry pushes in, I would say. Okay, archers wise, we'll put you here and try and get you to get some shots off. While you guys here push up about here, say, and then push for this. We'll keep my generals here at the back. We'll commit another unit over here. And then I'm pretty happy with the deployment. What do you guys think? I think we're good for now. Alrighty, so let's meet the units. So we have our cavalry here on the far left flank. Heavy cavalry as well. They are the bread and butter of Dong Zhou's dynasty and empire. We've got our light axes here ready to push up onto the uh, the gates where we can. We've got some men getting some last supplies in the encampment here on the outside. We have the battering at Ram of course just behind my archers. Leather tanned of course. It should be able to hold out for now. And then further at the back, we have our esteemed generals. We have Dong Zhuo, the man, the myth, the legend of this campaign. So, throughout the next couple of episodes and now, we're going to be able to rapidly expand our territory. As we've done the hard la yards, we've defeated most of the Coalition's armies. Now that we've pieced out with them, they've made a lot of... Uh, peace treaties with other factions as well. We're going to be able to push up here. Now, I'm just going to slow things down. Why in God's hell do they have a trebuchet? That's insane. And one here as well. I didn't know they could field that sort of artillery. Crikey, we need to get out these orders quick, fast. Okay. Allow you to go to flaming shot. Even though it's raining, we're still going to be able to do it. Let's try and burn that trebuchet to the ground. Let's allow you to... Oh, it's only one of you. So, we'll allow you to go with the flaming shot here. And with you, I want you to try and hit the archers that are on the walls here. Okay, so they could very well destroy my battering ram if we're not careful. So, let's quickly try and move up with my axes as best we can. And let's go, 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 Gadget. Their trebuchets are already trying to lock and shot. Sal Sal might have outdone us here. <gasps> That's a massive explosion. Come on, men. Push up. Push for it. Okay. So we're already getting some loosed shots off here now. We're actually doing okay. Alright, try and trade with that where you can. It looks like my archers are doing well against their trebuchets. 
My Axemen are slowly but surely pushing into position. But if we lose around about half of what the enemy deployed, I'll be happy in this fight. I have been surprised with the amount of trebuchets they've brought to the fight. Alright, they're continuing to push out here now. Once we get to the base of the gateway, we'll be fine. So I was just sort of curious. You can actually equip there. Oh, looks like we've defeated their towers there. Excellent. So what I want you to do now on then is switch back to your normal shot. And we'll try and hit units. I don't know what best to do. Because like firing at that, that's not very good. You need to be firing at units at the back. Because most of what is on the wall is going to be... Come on, you need to be... Oh, okay. So, apparently, in Total War Three Kingdoms, even though it says attack gatehouse, you can't do it. This gate is not controlled by your forces. You must capture and destroy it. Well, that's a bit silly that you can't do that in every Total War issue. Oh, okay. Total War um, iteration, historically-wise, you are able to do that. They are axes. They should be able to do it. They can't... Act. It's like it's like they're trying to do it as well. But it's like bugging out. Anyway, we've got an interesting development here because a unit has actually come out. Now, I don't know if it's going to do that bug thing where even though we're fighting down in here, we might not be able to push. Okay, well, that's very fruitless now. They've pushed out. Okay, try and get my... Archers to skirmish where we can. We have destroyed their so the gates have been destroyed. Now, if you're not going to allow... If you're not going to allow... For soldiers... To break down the gates... I think it's incredibly silly... That the battering ram gets destroyed. We're doing actually quite well against these guys that are pushing. So they're going to be holding us out here. So we're pushing here. So allow them to do their thing. So it looks like the majority of the attacks are going to come from this side. But you live and learn. Now you guys have a blueprint for your sieges if you ever hit a large town. Like I said, this is my first siege, so... And at the end of the day, it's a blind let's play. So that's, that's really silly. In my opinion. No matter. We can deal with this now. Okay, try and hit these archers that are coming through here. Okay, so it looks like we are going to be massively choked in this center corridor then. Okay. Continue to hit this sort of stuff. Uh, you're actually probably not doing too bad, like hitting this. And they're more than likely going to close the gateway. Or is it going to bug and leave it open? If I send a unit of cavalry in... No, it's closed. Okay, well, looks like these guys need to relocate. You need to push up this way. And you need guys to push here. My archers are, for some reason, in the settlement itself. Which is silly. Alright, you're alright here. Try and hit these guys further at the back. Okay, sword-wise, continue to push where you can. And we'll try and do so. Yeah. That's a bit of a shame. We have captured their tower. Okay, we've captured a tower. Okay, they're now moving. Our Axemen are still fighting their cavalry here. Maybe we should just fire up on our own men there. Hit the Sabre Cavalry. And try and move them back. Come on, you're so in range. What? What? Are you out of ammunition? Yeah, well, look at what you are. Alright. Pull back then. Okay. Still allowed to push further up where they can. We can't seem to... Ooh, yeah, we can't seem to move that way. That's a shame. 
Alright, pull you back. And let's get the remaining of the military forces to give chase and push. Let's allow all my archers to push back here then. And along with my cavalry. So this will be a costly affair, even though we've, we're doing alright because we have proper swordsmen and stuff. But we did lose needless casualties on those two forces. Alright, we're pushing up here now. We seem to have some good active fighting within the streets. But uh, we'll be alright. This is just the first Sao Sao territory we're going to be able to take. We'll probably try and sue for peace as well. Because we're going to be able to consolidate and rebuild. It's just taking China slowly but surely in chunks. Especially on this difficulty. You don't want to risk it. And importantly, on the records mode with immortal characters. Okay, continue to get everyone to push. Right, try and hit this sword unit here now. But some of these swordsmen are heavily um, uh, experienced. Look at this. Seven star swordsmen, five star we're doing incredibly well here. Once we maybe get some space between like this intersection or maybe another, we'll be able to throw more cavalry and the such in. Okay, so everyone else is, yeah, they're all out of ammunition, which is a shame. So, if the battering ram theoretically destroys, you are better off potentially like pushing for the center here because it just allows you more ways to navigate the city okay you're incredibly weak here so pull back to this side okay I'm gonna move a general in just for support uh, boo here isn't the uh, most valuable commander. Okay. And even with their barricades, man. They've narrowed off the corridors even more. Okay, we're slowly but surely fighting in this cluster here. Fighting head-on is going to be long, slow and arduous. Not being able to flank will cause some problems. Further spearmen at the back. They have their archers doing well, raining fire upon us. They are under, well, the assumption to take as many of us as possible to hell. And they just want to try and take as many of them out because the city is lost. Okay. Let's continue to push where we can. Let's speed things up because it's turning into a bit of a meat grinder in my opinion. Push here where you can. Okay, so we're getting hit a little bit here with my general. That's fine. We can allow him to move back and forth and waste their ammunition. We're going to be able to get closer here now as well to push against their main spear line, which did seem to move slightly. If we could get one to slight a unit to slightly flank here, that would be in our best interest move you up here to continue to get the morale boost and we'll try and push where we can okay now they're not even trying to do that you can't why can't you hit the barricade from this side that's very silly okay let's push for this okay archers make sure at least one unit's hitting on this left hand side and they're doing is doing all right as well. I want to be able to get cavalry into the city to flank, unit, but at the moment we haven't found a possible way. Okay, it does seem like this barricade on this side is eligible to be broken down. So let's go and do that. Why aren't they engaging to break down the barricade? Please, for the love of God, break down the barricade. Nope, doesn't look like we can't interact with it for some reason. Not entirely sure. Alright, we're swinging down, put, finishing off the last of the archers here. They've now broken. Let's continue upon the initiative. 
some swordsmen might come back, but this will be their last lot of halberd infantry at the back. Alright, let's move my general up to get that additional morale buff and support. As it is a night battle, we're already getting the 15% buff. Well, it's like a debuff for them, but it's technically a buff for us, isn't it? You can think of it either way. Vice versa. Versa visa. <laughs> Alright, let's push before them. Push here. Push there as well. Lucky I'm speeding this up because it is an absolute meat grinder of a video, isn't it? <laughs> Not really much else we can do here now. Once we push past this, it's going to really open up for us. We're going to be able to send in the cavalry at least. We just need to push past this last hurrah. But at this point, they've made, basically smashed most of the attrition officers we can. These captain infantry, bow and spear combo, are doing very well. Okay. Let's send through our heavy cavalry now, shall we? Because by the time they get there, we should be able to do it. Okay, so 8% there. Okay, so let's slow things down slightly. Let's allow two of our units to give chase. And allow you guys to continue where you can as well. My cavalry is now hauling us within the settlement. And we're going to be able to do some flanking maneuvers where we can. Everyone's continuing to move to their position. Cavalry-wise, if you can push like this way, that would be most beneficial. And you guys can push this way. Okay. Allow a couple of our swordsmen to hit these guys here. While everyone else pushes this way. Okay. They're now flanking really well. And will allow you to flank this way as well. No, please accept the order. The pathfinding can be a little bit iffy. Especially when we're playing on extreme unit sizes as well. The settlements aren't designed for extreme units. They're only designed for the larger variant. Okay. Let's continue to push here where we can. Some of my swordsmen are, are routing. But that's okay. It does look like they're trying to relocate some of their spearmen. But it will be to no avail. Okay, push here. Okay, try and hit them from behind. And then try and hit you guys here as well. A nice strong cavalry charge against them would be perfect. And a nice one here as well. Excellent! Just what we want. A nice strong cavalry charge to finish them off. They've officially been broken. And allow everyone here to give chase. But they've still been very narrowly held off there. Victory! We have victory. We don't have to run off the last of them. Um, to be fair, now that there's no arrow towers here, I am going to try and run them down. Especially when there's a couple of blob duels. A couple of blobby units at the back. Let's speed things up. But we have victory here today. So here is a example, textbook example, of a large city fight in Total War Three Kingdoms. If you were curious. Okay, we might we're wiping out most of them in the center there. But there might be a couple that are running away and that are closer to Arrow Towers. Okay, let's quickly claim that there. Let's end the battle. So, how many men do we have at the end of this? How many men did we lose? Because it was a close one. Crikey. Okay then, let's continue back to the campaign map. So, we deployed 3,822. We lost 1,600. They deployed 2,200. Now, the reason why we lost that many men is questionably due to our strategy. We did essentially use two full axe units to my interpretation of we should be able to 
break down the gate, which was a bit silly. In Shogun 2, you were able to do it with fire torches. In Attila, in Rome 2, you're able to batter it down with swordsmen. So in Three Kingdoms, you can't do that. But in future sieges, we're going to know for now. And we... We could have really resolved this if we brought more siege equipment. But having the one battering ram for the one point, especially that we picked a narrow corridor, even though it was a good idea because of the lack of arrow towers, there was not enough pathways throughout the city to vitally use our cavalry. Regardless, we're going to occupy this city straight up. We did lose two units of our axemen, which is quite bad as they were tier 5, 3 and 2. But hey... So be it. We can actually get some higher tier units now, I guess. So, let's occupy this settlement straight up and get our intimidation back on track. So, we have also now secured an entirety of a new commandery. And it's, uh, obviously, commandery is another word for province in uh, ancient China. So, from now, we're going to probably consolidate, rebuild where we can. They, they have taken our province of Luoyang. I'm interested to dive into diplomacy for now. Cao Cao, for peace. Now, who are your... So, what's the go here? So, allies, you and Xiao. So, you and Xiao, vassals. It was him that drew them all in. Yuan Shao has the majority of the vassals there in the south. It wasn't Cao Cao himself. Okay. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to dive into diplomacy and make peace with Cao Cao for now. Let's... <laughs> rhyming like a wizard once again. Oh, could we actually make an, a, a marriage? Wang Lan Lan. <gasps> Lu Bu! Ah! Ah, we could marry off Lu Bu. Because I'd like Lu Bu to have some children. He's 48, so he's getting a little bit past it. Would this work? The characters will stay in our faction. Would Lu Bu marry one Lan Lan? Hmm. We're going to have to think about that. Regardless, we're going to be able to sue for peace. And on top of that, we're going to be able to request a payment now if that does force us to go to peace with you and Xiao that's fine we're gonna have to take a couple turns already to replenish and we'll probably push against him in the next episode it's even like his son we, we actually killed Shu very early on in our campaign so we're gonna be able to sue for peace with Cao Cao here today and we're gonna be able to gain 1.2k let's accept that and get that deal signed Okay, so we are still at war with a lot of other factions. So Yun, uh, Yun still doesn't want that. Military access, create a vassal, support independence, that's fine. Also, Matang, um, I forgot to mention, died. A new champion has arose to lead the faction. Lan Li, I believe her name is. And... Really, that's rocketed our relations with them. I really would have liked to get some sort of um, negotiations with Martang. So guys, unfortunately on that note, it's time to end episode 7 of the Total War 3 Kingdoms Dongjo Let's Play campaign. We've managed to take an entire new commandery. However, we have lost the lumber yard. What we're going to do now is we're going to spend our general points where we can, quickly dive into construction as we have 4.6, and we'll try and push back this army here. So, we'll probably try and take some of that territory for the next episode. So, um, basically, we'll try and take as much territory as we can from smaller people, and if we do come up against one of the man main commanders of the coalition, we will fight it. So, thanks for watching this episode. We've taken two provinces. And now, with our secured position with Yu and Xiao to the north, we're going to be able to gobble up what remains of ancient China. Unfortunately, guys, it is time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know in the comment section down below your feedback for the series. And if you'd like to see more, that's the best way to ensure more content. 
Leave a dislike if you're not enjoying the series. Check out my social media links if you want to stay connected with me. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all in the description below. Highly recommend Twitter. Every single time I post a video, a tweet goes out. It's much more reliable than the YouTube sub box. These days, to get all the notifications for the channel, you have to click the bell, of course, to join the notification squad. I do enjoy reading those comments. Patreon and merchandise link in the description below, along with the Steam group. Come and join the community on Steam. And on that note, unfortunately, I have to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching once again. Make sure to take care of yourselves. Go out and have a fantastic rest of your day. My name is Ben Simsy. Goodbye.